Okay, so uh, it's a pleasure to introduce Stefan Mischler uh, from Paris Dauphine. And uh, he's going to talk about Villanese program part two. This doesn't mean that there was a part one that you missed. As uh, I think everybody asked to Stefan this. Uh, so. But uh, so part one uh, happened some, some, some time back. I think you will explain, right? Okay. okay so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so for the introduction, for the invitation. Okay, fine. Um, there is nice place and uh, congrats. So, uh, yeah, I, I would like to speak about today about uh, a program uh, by uh, Villani uh, about the, the, the question of uh, obtain a, a rate of convergence to the equilibrium for the Boltzmann equation, which is constructive. And uh, then I focus today on uh, the part two of the program, which is uh, the, the hypocreativity estimates. So I, I will give uh, an introduction of the, of the general problem, and then I will present uh, some way to, to obtain this uh, hypocreativity estimates first in a H1 uh, framework and then in a L2 uh, framework. Okay, so uh, here is the program. So uh, it is uh, written in some, uh, writing some notes by uh, uh, Villani uh, uh, of a course he gave in uh, uh, IHP in uh, uh, 2001. So the, the program was the following. I, I reordered the, 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 the point, the part. So the first one is to find uh, in a, some constructive method to get uh, some, um, some uh, say, coercivity estimates on the collision term which, uh, which appears in the Boltzmann equation. Uh, so I, I will say a, a word about this uh, later, but I want to concentrate in the, so it's the first part in a logical order. It was not in the, in the program by uh, Cédric at, at that moment. So the, the next uh, uh, part is to, f to get some uh, information of uh, dissipativity information uh, on uh, the all uh, Boltzmann, uh, so the, on the all linearized Boltzmann uh, operator, so which involves both velocity and position. And what we, we can see is that it is degenerating in the position uh, variable, so it's not so easy to get uh, some uh, information on how fast are uh, the the, the, the solution of the, of, the, of the linearized Boltzmann equation goes to the equilibrium. And then, the, the, to end the, the proof, uh, so, to, end, so the, to get some exponential uh, convergence toward the, the steady state of the Boltzmann equation, uh, in most of the case, we have to rewrite uh, the estimates we get in some in in one space. So here and here, we work in one space for which we are able to to take advantage of the structure of the of the operator. And then we want to to write uh, to get some information in some larger or smaller or different space, which is. Uh, for which we can uh, uh, then uh, have a good control of the nonlinear part. Okay? So for the linear part, there is uh, three steps. Uh, coercivity in one space, hypocoercivity in one space, extend the information on the linear <coughs> is it, uh, Boltzmann uh, 
uh, operator in many space and in some space which is adapted to the nonlinear uh, equation. Okay? Okay, so in fact, there is many uh, words uh, on the, the existence of solution in a, near to the equilibrium framework and to the trend to the equilibrium uh, of the solution. So, the, okay, the first one is by uh, Ukai, and, and then there is uh, many people who work on after uh, Villani uh, contribution, which has nothing to do, in fact, with the linearized equation. Uh, there is uh, mainly two, two schools uh, who worked on, uh, on this. Uh, one uh, okay, uh, uh, with uh, Yan Guo and other people from Chinese and, uh, and uh, China and, uh, and Japan. And uh, one by uh, uh, Clement Wu and, and many other collaborators. Okay. Okay. So, a word about uh, the Boltzmann uh, equation. So, it is uh, an equation which writes on uh, the density of particle, capital F equal uh, it depends of time, position, and velocity. Okay. So, here I I written here uh, in the case of uh, a bounded domain, the torus so or a bounded domain. So there is a transport part uh, and then a collision part. So I, I don't want to write here what is the expression of the, of the Boltzmann operator, the nonlinear and the linearized. You, you don't really not see this here. Uh, uh, so don't be afraid. And then, uh, okay, depending of the of what you are interested in, you can uh, consider the case of the torus for the position, the ca case of a boundary of a, a bounded domain with boundary condition, or the case of the wall space with a force field confinement. Okay, so uh, and then you have to add uh, some term here on the transport uh, part. So the only thing we, we you have to know. Uh, is that the the quadratic term? Sorry, here is um, of the okay for uh, the quadratic Boltzmann and, and Landau uh, operator uh, conserves mass, momentum, and energy. So what does it mean? That means that if I multiply the the operator by phi with phi the one v or v square, you integrate, you find zero, whatever is f, and then you obtain some conservation uh, for the solution of the, of the Boltzmann equation. That's the first important uh, information, piece of information, and the second one is the eighth theorem, which says that <coughs> if you multiply by log of f and integrate, this is uh, non-positive, and it is zero if and only if f is a Maxwellian. So in the case of the thorus, uh, is this. And then you, you expect to have the, the convergence. So now the problem is to get some uh, information on the rate of convergence. Okay, so... Uh, <coughs> yeah, I, I wrote... I'm writing a, a, a result, uh, which is, in, in some sense, the, the final step of all the program. Okay? It's the, the, all the program aim to prove something like that. So for some wave function in V, maybe in X also, depending on uh, the, the geometry, and, um, okay, and for some space, uh, which is a weighted uh, so or Lebesgue space, uh, if the initial data is close enough to the equilibrium in some space, then, in this space, then uh, there is, exists a unique solution which uh, exists globally in time and which converge uh, to the equilibrium with a rate which is 
say exponentially fast for uh, for the Boltzmann equation uh, for art spheres and in the torus, for instance, but can be also uh, polynomial in uh, in time uh, for other models. Okay, so in fact, with this in hand, you can uh, uh, improve. Uh, uh, a result by Devilet and Villani, which is the following. It's an if theorem. So you consider the inhomogeneous Boltzmann equation for art spheres, for instance, in the torus. And you assume, so that's something that we don't know how to prove, that um, the, the solution is bounded in some strong spaces. So H sobolev space and uh, control of the moment of the sales of the of F in L1. Then for the uh, relative entropy, and this is a, a way to, to to measure the distance between F and M in L1, uh, you have a decay which is a polynomial, okay, and that can be proved by uh, um, uh, entropy method. Okay? And then, so, when you are, so, you, you, you converge to, to F converge to M, and then when you are close enough to M, you can use the linearized uh, argument, okay? But you have to be careful with the fact that the E here is large enough to be compatible with the, the space you, you get here. Okay? And then you can improve and you, you get uh, that kind of uh, convergence with the exponential. And the, the, the rate here is the same as the, the, what you get by the linearized uh, uh, argument. Okay, so now. Uh, the first step in the Villani's program is to get some uh, coercivity estimates. What does that mean? You consider the uh, space homogeneous, uh, okay, so really the, the collisional operator, and you linearize it. So you, you introduce this linear uh, operator. You can see because of the invariant of the, of the, of the quadratic uh, operator that, in fact, uh, the null space is, uh, is this one. The same invariant with the same uh, uh, mass, uh, momentum, and energy um, variant. Okay? And then the goal, and what it's possible to prove, is that in... Uh, this space uh, here, um, the, the operator is symmetric, is bounded by uh, some norm with, uh, which can be different. It depends really strongly of the, of the operator you consider. And uh, this is positive. The quadratic form or the Dirichlet form is, is positive and uh, in the sense that it is lower bounded by uh, the projection on uh, the orthogonal to the, uh, to, the, to the null space controlled in the same norm as here. Okay? Okay, so... Uh, Okay, so that's the, the coercivity estimate for the, for the Boltzmann and the Landau equation. And, and then for these two models, we, we, we know exactly, uh, we have exactly some, uh, some uh, uh, quantitative estimate for, for this. So now uh, I want to consider the, the whole operator. So we, we consider uh, L equal S, the collision operator, plus T, which is typically the, uh, okay, the transport operator. So it can be just the free transport or uh, the, 
uh, plus a confinement. So T in general is minus V gradient X plus maybe a term like that. I, I will come back to this later. Okay. So what happened is that in one in belt space, you can prove that uh, okay, S uh, is self-adjoint, negative, and uh, T is uh, squee-symmetric. Okay, and then uh, this is the information you get just by the coercivity estimates. And if you write the Dirichlet form for the same norm for the all all operator, all the, the, both terms, because T is symmetric, it disappears, and you get this. And this is not enough in order to control uh, the long time behavior of the, of the dynamic of the associate semigroup. So the idea of the hypo coercivity. Uh, approach is to twist, to modify the, uh, the norm. So you have the initial norm for which uh, the two uh, operators are, are nice, and you modified it with a scalar product of uh, A, F, B, F, okay? In such a way that in this new, uh, for this new uh, scalar product, the associate directly form is coercive. Okay, so that's the, the idea. So at least when, uh, okay, uh, when uh, H uh, star is included in H, you have a uh, strong confinement. So for instance, in the torus, you, you can prove uh, in some situation that this directly form is uh, bounded below by uh, the norm, the, the twisted norm, the new norm to the square. So if you consider the uh, semi-group for an initial letter F, just, uh, just um, use the, the, this information. Write this. Okay. So this I not FT. Okay, you find two L FT. So for the new uh, scalar product, uh, this is less my two two minus uh, say lambda. Ft square. So at least for uh, um, the f such that you have this invariant, the global invariant. So here you assume that the initial datum, okay, so that so that the global invariant and that prove that imply that just the same all for any time. Okay, and then, uh, so both uh, this information give the first estimate here, integrating it. Okay, and then when you come back to the initial uh, norm, you get the same decay but with a constant here, which is in principle larger than one. Okay, and that's really the hypocoercivity uh, estimate. Okay. So in fact, there is many works on this. Uh, so in the uh, 80s, for instance, there is work by uh, Kawashima, Suzuzita. And in fact, the, the term uh, hypo, uh, hypo uh, coercivity appears in, the, in, the, in, in 2000. Okay, it's uh, introduced by Serik Villani, and 
Okay, and, and then what I want to, to show you, in fact, is that in the many, uh, there is many approach, in fact, uh, energy estimate uh, by Guo, uh, micro macro approach by, uh, by uh, the, the Japanese, Chinese, and uh, uh, American uh, uh, school. And in fact, all this uh, approach can be rewritten in the framework of uh, uh, as hypocoercivity as I written here. So just twisted the norm, the Hilbert norm, in order to get uh, coercivity for the directly form. Okay? So uh, here are a problem that I don't want to, to talk today. Uh, and then, uh, in fact, the, we can split the, the, the general uh, issue in several pieces. So we can. So the first point is the geometry of the domain. So we can consider the torus is simpler, the wall space with confinement force, a bounded domain. We can also consider several collisions operator. So the Lando and the Boltzmann equation or operator are, are, are quite uh, complicated, but you can also consider the Fokker-Planck operator, so which is uh, Laplacian of F plus divergence of VF, uh, or the relaxation operator, which is uh, rho M minus F with rho equal uh, the integral of f dv. Okay? And these two operators here, for these two operators, there is one uh, invariant, which is the, the mass, while for the Boltzmann, of course, there is, a, in dimension three, there is a five invariant. So it's, it's more complicated. And then uh, we can, uh, as I said before, we can try to uh, obtain H1 estimate or twisted H1 estimate that work for the Thorus and the Fokker-Planck equation in, uh, or in the wall space, or uh, L2 uh, estimate, which, which works, for instance, in the uh, domain. In a domain, you cannot uh, uh, take uh, H1 Uh, norm because if you consider this when we inter you integrate by parts with the boundary it's, it's uh, awful so this is forbidden for for um, for a domain for instance ok so maybe just Yeah, so what I can show just now is that uh, these two operators are uh, coercive. So it's quite simple. We write this in L2, M minus 1, with uh, M, capital M, the max volume. So what we get is, uh, so I rewrite divergence, of the gradient of f plus vf f m minus 1. That's the, just uh, the identity when you consider the Fokker-Planck equation operator, the standard one. And then this term, you just write it as m, the gradient of f divided by m, okay, in v. So here it's only in V, okay? F divided by M. So if you want to prove that it is positive, you put a minus, a minus, a minus. You make one integration by part, and you get this, okay? And that you have to know point carré inequality in the wall space, okay? So that's point carré, and you get this, provided that f divided by m 
multiplied by m is zero. So the, the local mass is zero. Okay, so you can do the same uh, for the relaxation operator. If I do that, I put directly the minus. I have got f minus rho m, f m minus 1. And what you do is you write, uh, okay, you observe that this is exactly equal to f minus rho m to the square uh, m minus 1 by expanding this. Okay, and so if you expand all this, what you get is f2 m minus 1 minus 2 rho f plus rho square. So when you integrate, there is 1, so there is an m here. Uh, there is a, one of these terms which disappear, and you just get the same as here. Okay? Uh, so the two models are, are correct here. And, uh, okay. So now, I want uh, to present you the H1 uh, uh, approach. So here we can consider an operator L, which is S plus T, where T is the uh, free transport operator in the thirds. So I, I write uh, J because there is three sets of uh, unknown. You can consider F and the, for which the macroscopic quantity are, are this. Okay. Macroscopic quantity. You can consider G is equal to F divided by M one half, and then the macroscopic quantity are uh, G M one half R D V. So here, when you consider F, you work in L two M minus one. When you consider G, you work in L two, and Sometimes we introduce the change of unknown, which is F divided by M. This one is in L2M, and the macroscopic quantity are something like that. And depending, okay, it's, it's good to, to change the variable of the unknown in order to, to, be, to, to understand what you are doing. So here we, we, we choose the, 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 the J. Okay? So we, we work in the flat space, L2. Okay? And then I, uh, I twist the norm, the H1 norm, XV. So L2 part, uh, gradient of X, G part, gradient of V, J part, and a mixed term. Okay? And the Dirichlet form is just uh, this one. So the, the claim, the, the result, is that you can choose uh, the coefficient here, positive coefficient, eta here, eta x, eta, eta v, small enough so that you have a, a, a lower bound on the Dirichlet form. Okay, and a, a possible choice is, is this one. Okay, so what you have to understand is uh, why is it true? Okay, and so I, I just want to make one computation. Is uh, so it's what we call D two is the part which come uh, from. So that's D0, D1, D2, and D3. So it's one part of this term. And one part of this term, in fact, I will write D21 is the part uh, where uh, you just consider not the L but the 
the, the T. Yeah. So, uh, so in that case, the definition, you have eta gradient x uh, T G gradient, uh, sorry, gradient V gradient x G minus eta uh, gradient V G gradient x G, and there is a T somewhere. Okay? So what you do here is that you observe that uh, in the case of the, of the thirds, uh, this commute. So this is gradient of V gradient X, uh, yeah, with a minus, uh, okay? And this is the same as minus V gradient X gradient X. So this commute, and then you make uh, uh, you take the adjunct of t, and the adjunct of t is uh, minus t, and you put it on the other side. So what's happen is that you get eta. Uh, so I have, uh, for instance, a t gradient uh, v minus gradient v t G gradient x g, okay, and uh, you observe. So you compute this. So this is uh, okay. This is uh, minus v. Okay, gradient x. So I'm a bit confused. Uh, no, it's okay. Gradient v plus gradient V, V gradient X, okay? And here there is two terms because of the dependency of uh, this operator in V, and they cancel some terms and you get gradient X at the end. So that's the commutator. Okay, so, uh, these terms give you eta uh, gradient x g to the square in L2. Okay? So that's the idea. You, you, you want to get this. Why? Because then using the Poincaré inequality or Poincaré Wittinger inequality in the torus, so sorry, you, two steps, you write that this is larger than the gradient of x on the mass, on the projection. Okay? So here, P of G for this operator, for both operators here, pi of G is just rho m. Okay? The integral of F dV, m. Okay, so here, get this, and then you use Poincaré inequality. Poincaré Wirtinger, uh, okay. L2 square, provided that the mean is zero. Okay, so that's the information you don't get The information is missing uh, uh, when you, you, you use the coercivity of uh, S. Okay, so that's the idea here. It's just, uh, okay. So now you can, uh, uh, so what you have to do is to be careful with the fact that you have extra terms, and so when you uh, you uh, take this, uh, you twist this norm, you you will obtain uh, extra terms, 
and then uh, th this one has to be small. You have to control it. So just uh, once we, we, we see why uh, the extra terms in that case can be uh, controlled. So <clears throat> we make uh, the choice A is gradient of V, B is gradient of X. So you have uh, in the torus, so you have all these uh, uh, okay, relation properties. Um, you have a very important information with this that in that case, the commutator of T and B is zero because you are in the torus. We use it there. And uh, this information is, is always true. And we assume some uh, thing about the, the collision operator. So it's not hard to, to prove this for, for this example here. So it's when you differentiate in V, the, the, the linear collision operator, uh, you t take the scalar product with the gradient V G. You can estimate by below two positive terms minus uh, a lower term. Okay? So that's, of course, it's harder to, to prove for the Boltzmann equation or the Landau equation. But it can be done. Okay, so now uh, what we do, we write. Uh, uh, the contribution, so d1, d2, d3, d4. Uh, okay, so it's just a, a splitting is d1, d2, d3, d4. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's not correct. Here is d3. A bit lost. So this is d3, 1. My notation. Okay. And then... Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so uh, the first part is just coercive, but partially. The second part, uh, there is, uh, okay, with the gradient of V, there is two uh, bad terms and positive term. The third part is what we did just before. So is, this is exactly the computation we did, and there is the collision part. And for the, f the last part, uh, with the gradient in X, um, you get, uh, okay, this term uh, plus something which is nice again because uh, B and S commute. Okay? So believe me. And then what's happened is that you can uh, remove this term thanks to the two terms here, this one and this one, when you take eta V small with respect to eta. So this term disappear. And this term and this term disappear because you are in the torus case. So this is zero, zero. Okay, so I just rewrite uh, the, the four terms together and I get this. Okay, these three terms in, in red, you can use cauchy schwarz inequality when eta square is uh, smaller than eta x, eta v. So this term, which is maybe negative, uh, disappear, and you forget this term, and then you get this quantity, okay? And the only bad term is the minus here, which comes from here, okay? But with this argument here, the Poincaré inequality, and uh, you can change the minus by the plus. Okay, and, 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 uh, and that's the end of the proof. Fact. Okay, you, you have exactly uh, all the information uh, you need. Okay. Okay, so two words about the... Um, uh, what's happened in the whole space with the confinement? First term. So we start with the Fokker-Planck uh, operator, so this one, and uh, the transport operator with uh, this term. And we assume that there is a confinement which is typically uh, x to the power gamma with gamma uh, larger than 1. Okay? The Fokker Planck. So I change variable, so it's the h variable, and in the h variable, the, the Fokker Planck operator writes like that. You observe that for this measure, 
probability measure with the V uh, normalized. Then uh, one is the unique normalized positive steady states. And the projector in this variable is just uh, the integral of Hm. So here the idea is exactly the same. You, uh, you consider the same uh, twisted norm, okay, and you get the same result. So what's happened? So the, the difficulty here is that, so I just rewrite the same uh, identity as before, just the same for the moment. But now uh, the commutator here is not zero, okay? And in fact, you can compute it. It's D2V gradient in XV. Okay? So what you can see is that uh, thanks to the Poincaré inequality, in the wall space in the X variable, this is less. So first, it is because, this is because the, gamma, the, um, the V is a polynomial. So you have first that uh, this quantity is less than the gradient of V, the norm of the gradient, gradient V. And then you can, uh, because of this identity, uh, inequality, you can change the, the weight here, which is bad, can go uh, not bounded by one, um, by a B, which is a gradient X. Okay? So here you can... Uh, uh, estimate these two terms thanks to this. But next, you have to, uh, to get some uh, information in order to, 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 to close the, the estimates. And you can get it <coughs> for this operator, the Coulomb operator, <coughs> uh, because it writes as uh, minus the Oh, yes, it's like that. Okay. Uh, okay, so you, you do the same as before, and what happened is that because of the, you choose the Fokker Planck equation, the Fokker Planck operator, uh, you have an extra term which is uh, A square H. Okay, and then, uh, okay, you, it's mostly the same because of the gain of regularity, the gain of one uh, gradient in velocity. Okay, and then the, the idea is the same. The only th uh, one thing is that you see that here the choice of eta v eta eta x is reverse with respect to the torus case. Which, okay, so uh, which it was uh, in the reverse uh, sense, so eta x less, uh, larger than eta, larger than eta z. Okay? It's, uh, I recall it here. Okay. So now, uh, I want to consider, next step, I want to consider uh, <clears throat> the relaxation operator in the whole uh, space with the confinement. Okay, so uh, I'm in F variable, the, uh, the S, F, okay, is the, the same here, the relaxation operator. And the projection is, uh, is uh, the same, okay, it's uh, P of, uh, so, sorry, so here is a P of F. Pi of f, okay? So uh, we are here. So uh, the problem here is that, uh, of course, uh, this operator has no uh, regularity effect in the v variable. So the key term in order to control uh, 
uh, that bad term was to use the a square h to the square, and we cannot hope to get something similar for the relaxation operator. So the idea is to consider a L2 norm, a, a, a modification of the L2 norm. Okay, so we forget about the H1 norm, and what we do is we add a term which is rho, the gradient in X of Laplacian on minus one, J, where rho is the local mass and J is the local, is the flux, is uh, the integral of FV. So the Dirichlet form is this one. And again, for eta small enough, we have the, um, we have the uh, hypocoris, hypocorisivity. So the, the proof, now I just want to show you how to manage with the, okay, the good term, how to get some, uh, some uh, information on the, on the projection. So it comes from uh, this term. So we, we write it, minus eta. And I consider the torus in order to simplify the discussion. Uh, gradient of x. And here I just consider the uh, transport part. So it's uh, D21, uh, like that. Okay? Then you compute is the integral. So I put a DXI, BI. And the integral of, of this term, so I, I, I only make the proof in the case of the torus, so without this term, just to understand. Uh, so here uh, we have a minus uh, V, sorry, VI, J, DX, J. And there is two terms. Uh, so the f can be written as p pi f plus f orthogonal. So it's uh, rho m plus f orthogonal. So here I put rho f m, okay, plus the gradient of x j t f orthogonal. And this term here, uh, so is in fact, because M is uh, symmetric, the only term which are no zero is when I equal J. So in fact, this is DXI, DXI, rho F. Okay? So, what you get is and there is a minus here, because of the minus. So at the end, you have a plus, the rho, the Laplacian minus one, the Laplacian of rho, plus some term, which is rho, uh, okay, like that. Okay, and this term is nothing but rho to the square L2. Okay, so, uh, okay, you get the, the term, and all the other terms are, in fact, of, uh, can be bounded by eta rho uh, f orthogonal or f orthogonal to the square with the eta. So w when you take eta small, you can kill all these terms, and you... The leader, okay, and then the leader term is this one. Okay, and then you can do the same 
uh, in uh, um, in the wall space with uh, with uh, a confinement term. And the idea is exactly the same, so believe me, we, you, you just repeat the same uh, strategy. Okay, so I written here uh, and get the element of the proof in the, in the slide uh, later. Okay, so to end, uh, we, we can ask to uh, what happened for the linearized Boltzmann equation. So uh, in, the, in the domain first. So in the domain, so you have to, to put some, uh, some uh, condition at the, some uh, reflection, some boundary condition, which are diffusion reflection, specular reflection, or mix of both. Okay? So again, I will just consider the thorough because the idea is, is the same. There is extra terms in that case. Okay? And what we do in fact, is the same idea. So we multiply, sorry, we, we introduce the macroscopic quantity, A, B, C. So the mass, so A is rho, B is uh, J, and C is something which is, something, is uh, more or less the, the temperature. Okay, and we project on, the, on this uh, variant of the, of the, uh, in the quantity which are in the neural space. And you look for a, L, a twisted L2 norm. So the L2 part plus something which is exactly the same. If you, if you have only one invariant, it's exactly the same as before. Rho, Laplace minus 1, the gradient of J. So here you have more invariants. So you have to play with... Uh, uh, with uh, more... Um, macroscopic uh, quantity. So five in dimension three. So alpha goes from zero, which is uh, zero, which is the mass, uh, to four, which is the, the temperature, the, the, the energy, the local energy, the kinetic energy. Okay, then, uh, okay, then uh, we do exactly the same. Um, Uh, and uh, and we we have uh, um, uh, for eta so eta uh, for common choice so of this uh, macroscopic quantity and on uh, eta we you have a, a, a lower bound like that um, on the on the new uh, directly form. Okay, so the choice of phi tile is given here. Uh, I have no time to, to explain in detail. Uh, the key point is uh, such a kind of uh, orthogonality uh, condition, okay, property on uh, phi tile. So for that uh, phi tile, phi is just uh, the invariant. Phi tile is this... Uh, is this um, Polynomial, and uh, you have this kind of uh, uh, of relation, and so when you apply it on the on the key term, so which is the d two one as for the, the the previous case, you can compute, and at the end you take you get uh, um, a posi positive part or. Positive term on the L2 norm of the projection, and uh, some term here which disappear because you are uh, in a bounded uh, or, or in the torus, say, or in the bounded uh, space. Okay, and then of course uh, you have to be careful with the with the remainder term, and uh, so that's the okay, uh, yeah, and and. Okay, and then there is some miracle, and uh, uh, the 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 remainder term, the, the most uh, uh, important term, which uh, mix the the, um, the the macroscopic part, is so that there is no 
eta four term, and, uh, and then uh, you can choose the um, the coefficient in such a way that uh, you win. Okay, so this doesn't work in uh, the um, case of the wall space because of this property, which is uh, uh, just uh, stupid uh, for the for the thirds. Just uh, okay, that when you integrate by part, uh, the two terms uh, are the same with the minus, and they disappear. So. When you do that in the in the in the wall space, uh, you have the confinement part, which gives you uh, a contribution, which in such a way that this is not zero. Okay, so uh, so just a word. So there is a, a kind of um, uh, there is a way to to conclude. Uh, in the case uh, of uh, the linear Boltzmann equation. In fact, it only works for the linear Boltzmann operator, not for the Lando. Uh, when uh, V, the potential, is the harmonic potential, is uh, x squared. And the, the idea, so it's uh, or by Duan, uh, the idea is to uh, mix some H1 estimates with a macroscopic. Uh, contribution here. So it's, okay, it's, it's a bit technical. The, the, the good thing, okay, the, the, the idea is to put uh, uh, here something such here and here, something so that when you uh, look to this term, you get an information of, on the macroscopic quantity you, you want to control. So A, C, and B. Okay, so you have um, you have also uh, an estimate by below hypocoercivity estimate, and the interesting thing is that the difficult part you see here, just uh, before here, uh, the difficulty was on the for alpha between one and three, which means on the, on the, um, sorry, alpha here, alpha between one and three, so it's on the flux, on the integral of f, v. Okay, so that's the, the point, how to control this term. And then uh, the nice thing uh, is here, so is that uh, the D21, or I don't know, uh, the, the number, so the, 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 the important thing, okay, yeah, there's two things. So, because you are in the harmonic, for the harmonic potential, there is some uh, magic uh, things which occur, which is that this norm with the, with the gradient of X in X and the gradient in V uh, is uh, almost lower bounded, but only for G perpendicular. And then the, the, the contribution for the, the flux uh, comes from the fact that uh, you get, uh, so on one term, you get a quantity like that. Uh, X i b j plus x j, uh, j b i to the square. And then, in order to conclude, you need a Korn's lemma, uh, which says that uh, you can uh, control thanks to the symmetric part of the gradient, which is more or less w what you have here, the x is, uh, is this quantity, but you are in g variable, and then when you come back in uh, h variable, uh, you have exactly uh, the gradient, the gradient in x. So what you need here is that to have a control from this to uh, the full derivative, that's the, the, the symmetric part, and you need the, all the derivative. And then with the um, Poincaré inequality, you get an information on u to the square. Okay? And okay, so there, uh, there is a non constructive uh, proof by Duan. Uh, um, and in fact, uh, for, so that's, uh, that's work for any v. And in fact, uh, I have no time. Um, uh, we, 
we can get a constructive uh, estimate here in order to get uh, uh, the proof at the end constructive. So to conclude, so uh, all the the hypocoercivity estimates I know, or say hypo uh, coercivity uh, or I or convergence, maybe I can say like that. Uh, so, for all these uh, operators, for the semi-group, associate semi-group, in some case, we can get, uh, say, uh, uh, a decay. So, say, in the, in the case, we have a spectral gap. Uh, okay, something like that. And uh, so there is many uh, cases for which we can prove this. And uh, in all the so the proof can be uh, different than what I present by uh, high energy, Lyapunov, or uh, um, micro macro uh, decomposition. But in fact, I believe that we can always. Uh, uh, come to this kind of proof, which is just to work on uh, the degree form in a good uh, uh, Hilbert space. Okay, so that's uh, the, the contribution, my contribution uh, uh, here in this work is to rewrite uh, the work by uh, Guo here and uh, also uh, here by Duan uh, to get really the same uh, framework as uh, the, the hypocoercivity for the uh, um, as, uh, as, uh, as introduced by uh, Cédric Villani. I believe that uh, in fact we can uh, here go uh, generalize this with almost constructive uh, estimate for any uh, V, reasonable V. Uh, so it's a work in progress with uh, Kleber uh, Carapatoso. Uh, in fact, for the, the good term, so the, the one which gives you uh, the information uh, you, you need the, the new information, the information uh, is missing in the, in the coercivity estimates, we, we, get, uh, uh, we get it. Uh, but uh, when I, I uh, verified the, the, the proof uh, recently, in fact, for the moment, there is some missing, some remainder term that I, I cannot control. So we have to, to think again. And uh, there is one uh, open problem, which I think is quite simple, and uh, uh, which is this one. So to get a constructive proof for this uh, estimate, corn inequality, uh, with uh, a potential. So for instance, in, the, in a domain, it's, it's, uh, it's, there is many works, it's known. So for, I say for, for the harmonic, term harmonic potential, I believe we have a proof. And in general, I don't know. So it's quite, it's, okay, it's, it's much more simple than the, the Boltzmann equation. Uh, you can uh, understand this, uh, quite easy. And that's an open problem. And if you get this, then uh, uh, with a constructive constant here, uh, we, you, you can go one uh, step forward in the Villani program. Okay, thank you very much.